Welcome to Bracken's Alternative Energy Lessons. Today's topic is going to be wind turbine towers and specifically how you can build those towers. The first one we're actually going to talk about, you're probably not going to build, it's more of a commercial style tower and that's called a free standing tower. This is the one you're going to see the big wind turbines on. Um, it's a very attractive style and it has a very small footprint. Unfortunately, they usually take a crane to erect and a, and a crane to maintain, so it's usually not a viable solution for most home builders. Also, obtaining steel of the size that you would need is also a little bit harder. So, if you do want that kind of tower, I definitely recommend purchasing one commercially. But we're not going to talk about this one anymore. We're going to go ahead and go on to the next one. Here we have a lattice tower, and this is a very common tower used to be used a lot uh, to mount the turbines that used to drive the, the well pumps on farms. So it's a very time-tested tower. They're great. I personally wouldn't use these if you were going up too tall. You can buy these that go up pretty tall. But if it was me, I would probably limit it to about 15 to 20 feet in height only. And only for a smaller wind turbine, say 4 foot diameter rotor or less. Basically, it's consisting of 3 to 4 legs and then still slats running along to support it up. This kind of tower could be produced sideways and then tilted up and then the foundation laid underneath it. You could also lay a solid foundation and build it upwards depending upon your capabilities. Uh, but I'd go ahead and put the tower up first and then I'd make a hoist to actually carry the wind turbine up to the top and then you could work on it up there. Do note, if you're working on the wind turbine, make sure that it is stopped, that you have some kind of braking mechanism available. That way it's not a danger to yourself. The wires here could either be dropped down the center, particularly if you're worried about your wind turbine spinning around and around and around. If you have a daily wind cycle where your wind is consistently coming from different directions, then you're probably going to want to drop it through the middle, disconnect it about once a month, let it unravel, and then reconnect it back up. Here where I'm at in Utah, my wind pretty much comes one direction, so it's not really a concern to me. I would probably run my wires uh, in one of the little legs. Um, overall, this is a pretty decent uh, tower, as long as you're staying small. The footprint is going to be a little bit bigger than any other kind of tower type. Um, but it, it can work a little bit better than a guide tower as far as space usage, so it's, it's kind of a 50-50 with this one. The most common type of tower for home builders is called a guide or guided tower. And these little things right here, these are guys, which are cables that support the horizontal force that is being applied to it. So here the mast, you can notice, is quite a bit skinnier than, say, a freestanding tower. These are typically made out of water pipe, anywhere from 2 inches to 4 inches thick. Excuse me, they go about, actually about 8 is what I've typically seen. Um, if you're going 2 inches, I would keep it small, a 15 footer perhaps, with a 4 foot rotor or smaller. 2 inch water pipe is really not necessarily designed for this kind of stress. Also, if you have threaded pipe and you're trying to use a cup or to to, to connect them together, I'd really like to caution you there. That can be very dangerous. Once you've threaded that pipe, it does become a pretty weak point, and it was never really designed for that stress. So if you are going to use water pipe, I would go ahead and cut off the threads if it's already got it, and then weld it together. Any kind of tower failure is always going to be catastrophic. You're typically going to use your tower and your turbine and anything it falls on. So. Go ahead and make sure your center mast is plenty strong and you're not going to have any issues with that. Uh, the great thing about using various sizes of water pipe is you can always drop your wires down through it, giving you a nice handy conduit. Uh, typically, if you still have that uh, twisting problem, you're going to want to disconnect it and unravel it. Um, you Quite a few different things you can make to, to fix that problem, though, but a lot of them will take a lot of additional time. Uh, disconnecting and winding it is... is just fine for most people. Usually you want to give your turbine a maintenance check anyway, so it's not a big deal. Okay, now your center mount mass. Um, here I've got a concrete with rebar drawn. A lot of people will make it pivot though. That makes it very easy to take up and take down, and so that way you can tilt your tower up. Here I have a very, very basic design. I've got a concrete block, I've got a couple steel plates coming out, 
that you've drilled a hole into. Then you're going to take your, your, your mass and you're going to mount that to some kind of a similar disc type shape that you can drill holes in. So if you've got two slats here, two slats there, put it in, put a locking pin in between it. That will allow it to pivot. And it's very simple, very easy to make. The only thing to remember is your locking pin will be supporting the entire weight of, of the mass and the turbine, so make sure it's appropriately sized. I've also seen quite a few different creative things here. I've seen everything from using heavy-duty hinges to, I actually saw one made out of a tree stump once. They actually cut into the tree stump and put the holes through it and, and put in a locking pin. So there's a lot of different options here. Um, feel free to, to be creative. I do recommend this design. It's more simple and it's, it's pretty easy to build. Uh, an optional tool, particularly for a pivot tower, is to go ahead and put what's called a gin pole. And what this is, is this provides leverage, leverage as you're raising the tower. Just makes it easier. That way you can pull up and push down on that as opposed to trying to actually pull up and push down on the tower. The only thing is I would make sure that it's removable. I have seen people have them solid mounted on there or welded on there. It takes up a lot of room once you're onto the ground, so I'd go ahead and re recommend bolting it on there or fitting it in some kind of channel to make it removable. That way it's not wasting any extra space. Now your guy wires. Now your guy wires are typically uh, metal braided cable. It's readily available anywhere. I've even seen it at Home Depot before by the foot. So it's pretty available. You could use rope if you were going temporary or even chain. The issue with chain is a little bit heavier. Uh, guide wires, you can get turnbuckles that allow you to tighten it and loosen it as needed. Now, for mounting brackets, I got kind of a formal one here. I got a concrete block, a couple pieces of rebar thrown into the ground, a little extra support, and I've got an eyelet uh, mounted in the cement that you then attach the guy to. Uh, building one of these will probably start you out at about 60 bucks and up. Over here, I got more of the ghettoist of the ghetto ways to do it, and it's called a dead man. And that's not really a dead body or anything. But it's anything that you can dig a hole and throw in the ground. A bicycle would be great, a bunch of metal pipes. Pretty much anything you can throw in the ground and wrap around, as long as it's not going to suffer any kind of decay or become brittle or anything like that. So basically, just bury something, attach it to it, and, and you're done. Another option, of course, probably for more of the temporary, you could use a stake. You could also attach it to a tree or a bumper of a car. If you've got a bunch of old cars in your yard, go ahead and do something creative there and attach it to the bumpers of the car. It would look kind of cool. As far as rules here, I say guide wires every 15 feet. If you're going 20 feet, well, one set of guide wires would probably do you. Going 25, I'd go ahead and throw in two. If you're going 30, I'd throw in two. If you're going 35, I'd still do two. So, kind of take that as needed. Uh, general rule here, one, for every one X up, go one and a half to three quarters X out. So if I've got my guy wires at 10 feet, I'm going to want to put my mounting someplace between five and seven and a half feet. Um, again, so if I go up again to 30 feet, then I'm going to want to be clear out to here. Okay. Uh, actually, I think that pretty much covers it. Erecting this tower can be kind of dangerous. I do recommend to have at least three people there to help you. You have to do it with the turbine on it, so you're going to have a lot of weight. You can use a winch or even a car if one's not available. Uh, just make sure to do it slow and, and take it up very carefully. Uh, always when erecting a tower, make sure everyone's safe. Don't let anyone stay directly underneath the tower. That can be a very dangerous place. Many towers do have problems the first time when you're erecting them, particularly if they've never been up before. So always be careful and just remember general safety rules. I hope that this video has helped answer a lot of your basic questions about towers. Uh, feel free to be creative. Like I said, I've seen some pretty crazy things out there throughout the year. So uh, use your creativity. Come up with something new and see how well it works and uh, let me know about it. I'd be happy to include it in a future video. All right, well, thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, catch next episodes coming up soon. Thanks.